I'm Davey, and I'm awesome, and welcome to Davey's Awesome Stories, where I tell funny stories from my past or go on a rant in an effort to make you laugh. So we've all heard of weird laws, really weird ones. So I'm going to talk to you about three weird laws that I found out about this week. Now, let me make a little disclaimer. Once I heard about these, I didn't do a lot of fact checking. I googled them, but I didn't painstakingly make sure that these are 100% accurate. So take it for what it is. The first weird law, apparently. In the state of Tennessee, it is illegal to shoot a fish from the back of your truck. First of all, in most states, it is illegal to shoot from a vehicle. Even if you're hunting and you got a permit and everything, you have to get out. But this is so specific. You can't shoot a fish from the back of your truck. When it gets that specific, it kind of tells me this must have been a problem. Because here's the thing, they don't just look at a situation and go, This should be a law. Okay. No, that's not how it works. To make something a law, they have to write out a bill. They have to present the bill. They have to vote on the bill, which none of this is a quick process. But then, once it's been introduced and voted on, now it's a law. And I know most of you my age know this already because you remember the School of Rock videos that used to come on in between our cartoons on Saturday morning. I'm just a bill. I'm Capitol Hill. I doubt that somebody just thought of this one day, like, Hmm, I'm worried that somebody's going to try and shoot a fish from the back of the truck. We should take steps to make sure that this never happens. No, I seriously doubt that. I seriously doubt anybody ever thought that this was going to be a problem. So it must have become a problem. This means that someone did it. Some redneck. Why do you think it must have been a redneck? Because they're from Tennessee? No. I assume they're redneck because they shot a fish from the back of their truck. Sorry, but that screams redneck. So okay, maybe I'm judging, maybe it wasn't a redneck, but I'm going to say it's a safe bet. But this means they drove their truck to a pond or a lake or something where fish were, probably backed that truck as far as it would go to the water, if not in the water a little bit, and either just started randomly shooting at water or when fish jump out really quickly, which I will say right now, if somebody is a good enough shot where they can shoot a fish just from very quickly jumping out of the water, because it's quick. I've seen it. It's like if you blink, you'll miss it quick. So if they can really do that, let them. But again, they did this, and probably all day, and probably several times, and probably kept getting away with it on the technicality that, well, there's no law that says I can't. And they just got together and were like, we got to do something about this. We got to write out a bill stating that this should be illegal and why. Which I kind of hope that was a very small bill. I hope the bill just simply read, I propose that we make it illegal to shoot fish from the back of a truck. My reason? Because they are trying to shoot fish from the back of a truck. Then again, in Tennessee, why make that law so specific? Why not just simply say no shooting from a vehicle, like most states do? Then we come to my home state, the state of Nevada. Now this this law isn't like super wacky and crazy, just weird that it would actually be a law. Here in the wonderful state of Nevada, apparently it is on the law books. It's obviously not very enforced because how would you? But it is apparently illegal in my state to take a shower with your spouse. That's right, they got specific and said spouse. So apparently if you're only dating or engaged, shower together all you want. But once you get married, you take separate showers. What makes me laugh about this weird law though, is that when it went into effect, why specifically the spouse? Why at any point in time were they at all concerned with literally any two consenting adults showering together. Like, was there a point in time in our history, our history as a state that is just one huge desert, where they were saying, we got way too much water in this desert state. Start showering separately. By the way, for this bit, the lawmaker from Tennessee came to Nevada. Was there ever a time you were just upset about us conserving water and time? Because let's be honest. As a married couple, showering together is not as fun as they make it seem in the movies. In the movies, it's sexy and fun, and you get together and you guys get all soapy and naked. 
in reality, it's more something we do just to save time. We gotta get out of here, we gotta go, hey, oldest kid, watch the younger kids, we're gonna take a shower real quick. But really, showering with your spouse is more annoying than anything. Like, you're not gonna have sex in the shower, let's just be honest. Unless you're like an incredibly flexible athlete with really impeccable balance and really, really good, like, safety mats on the shower floor type deal, you're not going to because you don't want your shower to end up looking like a horror movie scene. No, you just wash. And for both of you, and it's annoying. Like, one of you is close to the water, hogging it, while the other one's freezing and getting soap drying on them, and, and the other one is your wife, who's also getting annoyed. But let's just make it clear, not as annoyed as the husband, who not only has to sit there not getting any water, but has to listen to his wife complaining because she actually had the annoying idea that she could get naked in the shower with you and not get molested. Which makes me wonder if that's how it became a law. Was the lawmaker's wife just really obsessed with showering with him? And he just wanted a few minutes alone because I will understand that one. When you are married with children, getting a moment to yourself can be very difficult. Heck, when they're little kids, nothing is off limits. They don't care what you're doing in the bathroom. It's an annoying day when you realize that your morning dump is now a teen activity. Heck, my wife especially, everything she needed to do in the bathroom she would hold all day until I went in there to take a shower. Because remember, I'm a graveyarder. I usually take a shower at the end of my day, which is in the middle of yours. But that's the time that she would either have to use the bathroom, or now she has to brush her hair or her teeth, or even one time, she came in while I was taking the shower because she just suddenly got the notion in her head that she needed to go reorganize the medicine cabinet. So was that it? Was this lawmaker just going, this will finally get her to leave me alone so I can have a moment of peace while I'm in the shower? Now I gotta ask, did it work, dude? Did you get your time alone? I doubt it. Because you probably have a wife like mine who's like, oh, I just decided I wanted to have a random conversation with you right now. And now one of the dumbest, if not the dumbest law I've ever heard of. Apparently, within the city limits of Chicago, Illinois, it is illegal to eat inside of a burning building. I really gotta ask, when was that ever a problem? And if it was a problem, what's the problem? Like, obviously, if you're eating and you don't know the building's on fire and you get caught in the fire, okay, well, you didn't know the building was on fire. But if somebody is aware that the building is on fire and they want to eat in there anyway, bon appetit. Like, seriously, that's the only excuse I can understand for that law. And maybe it's somebody with, like, some kind of mental retardation or Down syndrome or something so bad to the point that they just don't understand anything that's going on around them, because that happens. Most can function fairly normally, but there are those who they don't understand anything that's going on around them, anything being said to them, nothing. But why make a law for that person? That person doesn't understand a law and why you should obey it. So just get them out of the building. What are you going to do, yell at them, come out of the building? You're going to have to go and get them out. But again, somebody who has the mental capacity to understand a law and why you have to obey it, if they don't know better than to not eat inside of a burning building, then they deserve to burn to death. They don't make laws for no reason. So what was the scenario? What happened? Was there really a moment that somebody was yelling, Hey everyone, get out! The building is on fire! And the answer they got back was, Not to get my chili fries! If that's what happened, I hope he died. Because not only is he stupid, but let's face it, he's part of the reason there is world hunger. He's hoarding it all for himself. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm fat and I love food. I love food. I've gone on and on about food many times in many of these videos. But you know what? Whereas I can say I've never been, like, trapped inside of a burning building or anything, I can say there have been times that, in my apartment even, we've smelled smoke outside, the fire alarm is going off, and, and while I'm scrambling trying to get the kids and the dog and the very important things we would need, like our phone and wallets. At no point did my mind go to, okay, honey, honey, get the kids, get the dog, get the wallets, and get some marshmallows so we can make s'mores. That hasn't happened. So that stupid law kind of goes along with the stupid warnings video of, uh, can we just let nature run its course on that one? So there you have it. That's my story video this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, 
hit that little bell so you get notifications for when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me about some weird laws you've heard of. Love you guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.